Welcome to Rusty Studio. In this video, I will show you how to incorporate your Ready Player Me avatar into Unity's Starter Assets third-person character controller package and have it working on both a desktop and a mobile environment. So for this product, we're using uh, the Unity version 2021 LTS and up. All you have to do is to go to Unity's hub, press new project, and we're going to use the 3D URP core template. Name your own project and select your location and create the project. Well, that is being built up. I'm going to explain the two tools that we're going to use in this video. So first off, we're going to use the Ready Player Me avatar. What is Ready Player Me? Ready Player Me is a free service that allows you to create your own personalized avatar. You can choose from various hairstyle, feature features, and clothing options to create an avatar that looks just like you. Um, once you created your avatar, you can download it to Unity using their SDK, or you can actually download it as a GBLF file and then import it to Blender 3D and make your own changes on any 3D software. We're also going to use Unity Starter Asset third-person character controller. It's a free asset that Unity has on the Unity Asset Store. So make sure you have a Unity ID to have access to these assets. Um, this Unity Starter Asset third-person character controller is a set of pre-made assets that allows you to create a third-person character controller in Unity. The assets include a character model, a controller script, and a variation of animations. Let's jump back to Unity. We are presented with a sample scene, something very normal on Unity when it's being built up. So in order to acquire the package, let us go to Windows, Package Manager, and here on this dropdown, we're going to select My Assets, and we're going to start to type Started Assets. And here we have the start as a third person character controller. Now I already have it on my system, but I'm going to hit import. So in this case, um, he's being prompt to me to install or upgrade the package. I'm going to say yes. In your case, you're going to download everything. You're going to be shown a window like this, the import unity package. All you have to do is select all just in case and hit import. And the package is already installed in our system. To see if the package is installed, let us go to our project window. Here, there's a folder that's going to call Star Assets. And there is a folder called Third Person Controller. So let us jump here, and there's a scene called Playground. Playground. Double click. And here we are. Right off the box, the package has basically everything we need for a third person character controller so it will hit play we are going to see that using our keyboards we can we can walk hitting shift we can run we can see that we have some audio effects we can jump hitting the space bar and with a mouse we can rotate with the control, with the camera, everything works correctly. Now, something that I forgot to mention back when I was downloading the package is that we're using the new input system from Unity. So in my case, I was prompt to being update the package. In your case, you're going to be prompt to either apply the new input system and restart Unity when applying this. So just follow the instruction and everything will be installed correctly to your system. There's also something that package comes is with mobile input. So if we make a small change here and we enable this game object here, the UI CamSR assets, and here on the game window, we change it to simulator. Here I have the OnePlus 7 Pro. So let us fit the screen. Don't worry, it is normal. There we go. Now I'm going to hit play. I know you cannot see it, but I have my, my hand back behind my back. So because I'm going to use here the joystick from the input. And it's already working. We can look around with this. The sensibility is a little high. We 
can adjust that later on. Can walk and then we can jump. Thanks to Nudity, we have everything we need to start playing around and add our own avatar using these assets. So right now, we're going to add our own avatar from the Ready Player Me system. Before adding our own avatar to Unity, we must first create it. So if you don't have an account, go and create an account on the readyplayer.me and create your avatar. Now, before able to download it, we need to download to Unity the SDK. In order to get the SDK, we're going to documentation from the Ready Player Me system. And then here it's going to say that in order to import the Unity SDK, we must download it using the package manager. So we're going to do that. So here we have a Git URL in order to download the SDK. So we're going to copy here this. Let us go back to Unity. And on Unity, we go to Windows. Package Manager, and here on the drop down with a plus sign, we're going to select Add Package from Git URL. Then we're going to paste and then add. Again, in my case, it's going to be either being for me updating the packages was already inside my communities, but follow along, don't worry about it. Okay, I think we are basically done. You're going to notice that you are going to be prompt with a few boxes that hit yes and update. You're going to know the package has been installed when the top menu is here. You have one called Ready Player Me. If you hit it, we have the avatar loader, the settings, check for updates or rerun setup. Now we're going to select the avatar loader. And this is where we're going to download our avatar and you're asking for the avatar URL short or shortcut that you're going to have this URL back in the ready player me hub. So let us go back there. Okay. Here in, once you have entered and created your account, we're going to select enter hub. If you only have one avatar, it's going to be the first one here on the page and it's going to be your first primary ID. So in this case, I'm not going to use the avatar, that avatar. I'm going to use this one over here. And once you see the avatars, there's a three dots. You're going to select that. And there's a button called copy.glb URL. We're going to use this one. Let us go back to Unity. And here we're going to eliminate this and paste the new URL. Now, before downloading it, you have you can add extra features to your avatar. You can add any eye animation and use voice to animation. Now, these are the tools for voice to animation. Um, I, I don't have it here. I haven't tested it. So you can use your use eye animation. This comes already with your avatar, regardless of the animations you're running, your eyes of the player will blink constantly. So those are the features. Just add, that's the difference when using the avatar loader. You can add features to your avatar versus downloading the 3D model that is not going to be ready to be used on Unity. Once we add the URL, it says hit load avatar, the current scene, and here we go. Let me move this little player here. There we go. See, we have both the player amateur is the one that came with a third person package and we have our avatar. You can see you have the avatar is with basically with numbers. So let us change the name. What I use for it, see? Now we have both the necessary tools in order to make this work. Before that, I'm going to split what do we have with the starter package? By default, right on the hierarchy, we have the necessary components. We have the game object with the environments and all the prefab necessary to have everything looking like it is looking on the scene. We have our main camera. Now, something different with the main camera is that it has the Cinemachine brain, meaning that a Cinemachine camera is telling the main camera how to behave. This Cinemachine brain is, is the player follow camera. This player follow camera is actually a Cinemachine virtual camera 
and as you can see it has all this nice feature the one we are going to concentrate is the follow section that is seen constantly a game object called player camera root that is inside our player now every time our player moves around that's the center focus that the follow camera is aiming at and that's the thing that's one of the things that we need to consider when we're adding all the components to our ready player me avatar so our player amateur has basically necessary components to have our character move or animate so obviously we have our transfer components we have the animator component that comes with the package with a controller which is the star as a third person and we have the amateur and everything for to make everything ready for the animation um, as you can see we have another components that is the one making the player moves around we have a third person controller script he's the one responsible in communicating with the character controller component here with this script we can actually change the moving speed change the sprint speed etc we can actually add remove or play around with the audio we can select the how he the height when he's going to jump the gravity is going to fall we have the jump timeout the foul timeout um, we are going to here we can select if the player is grounded at when we hit play or not and here we have a field for the player camera follow another component we have is the star asset input the star asset input is the one communicating with the input system as you can see we have the star assets it comes already with inputs for the keyboard with, with a mouse now that we have an explanation on what the player amateur is doing let us make it work with our ready player me avatar first thing first let us again check a few things so first i'm gonna do is as i mentioned earlier the player amateur has a player camera root and we're gonna start adding that so uh the player camera root is on the as a child of the main player game object and on the y is on 1.375 i'm gonna go and copy that and go to my ready player me avatar and i'm gonna go and create an empty game object I'm going to name it camera root and I'm going to add that position on the wide, the 1.35, 1.375. Then I'm going to go to the player follow camera and where it says follow, if you, if you hit it again, it jump us to the player amateur. We're going to add the camera root which has created for the ready player me and put it here. Let's go here, camera root. And here we go. Do you notice that the camera is pointing at us and not at the amateur from the package? So it is working. The thing we also need to be aware is that on our ready player me avatar, we must add the tag of player. Okay. Let us check on the player follow camera. What else? Okay, here again camera root we have everything here let us close this little guy here so now we must focus on the components now oh my apologies I didn't explain what happens when we download our word player me directly using the SDK so first thing you notice that we have our own animator component already matched up here on the player Realm me that's the difference when you download your avatar using the SDK versus using the hub directly with a model um, the sdk allows you to have the avatar ready for unity's um stuff versus when you download the model it has nothing so this um so this tutorial only will work if you use the sdk to download your avatar so now that we have everything here we must use the controller from the package so let us go back to the player amateur here here to identify where it is on the location there it is let us go here and on our avatar let us go drag this our asset third person and we add it here now we have access 
to the animations from the package. If you want to make sure that it can work or it will work with your avatar, I'm going to show you this little nice trick here. Let us go to window and we're going to look for the animation window. Hit it here. Now, selecting our avatar, we're going to select one of the animations. Let us go select the idle animation and hit play. And as you can see, our avatar is actually moving. Now, maybe obviously the player is in the middle, in the middle. So I'm going to here. I'm gonna go with the run one or the walk. Let's go with the walk. Hit play and here we go. So we are in the clear. Let us keep going. We just added the controller for our avatar. All of this comes with it. And now, as you may notice, one of the things we are gonna have here, we're gonna, gonna see this. You know what? Instead of jumping, let us do something different. I'm gonna go player and select property. And we have our own window here, so I can I can compare. Let's see here. Okay, we have the transform check animator. We have the uh huh, uh huh, uh huh check check. Now let's jump into the script. Now the only reason I'm I am not going to add the character controller is because when you add the script from the package. By default, is added automatically. By adding the third-person controller script, by default, it's going to add you your player input and your character controller. Now, all we need to do is, is going to make sure that the player input has the player input. No, it, it does not. So let us add it. Let us go into the player input component on our player amateur. Select here. It is there. So I'm going to drag this into our avatar. And we have access to it. Now, you may remember that in one moment I told you that in here we need to add the cinema machine camera root. So, from our avatar, so let's drag the new game object that we just created. Make sure everything is okay. Okay, everything is over there now we just need to add the starter asset input script okay now the basic rigid body push we don't actually need it in order to make everything work but if you want to add it just go for it so i'm gonna remove this and then make sure everything is what it's supposed to be. Now I am going to disable this. Select my. Okay. Let's make a quick small suggestion here. So our small collider is, is on the ground. So let us go to our character controller. And on the center here, we're going to pull dot Mari 3 for the height. I think we're good. We're just going to compare it with our player amateur here. And it says 45, 22, 293, and we're good. I'm going to save it here and hit. I'm going to then remove this. Make sure everything's on the center here. And that's going to hit play. We have a small error, but, and I know what it is. Don't worry. Okay. Let's go escape a little bit here. In order to fix what we just saw, all we have to do is go to the animator component on our avatar. And here where it says, um, apply root motion, um, deselect the section. So it will be easy breezy. Now, if you move around and jump and you notice a few, um, hiccup also. All you have to go to do is go to your character controller, make a small changes. You can copy the one that I have. Let me increase this little guy here. We can see all of the components here. So for the character controller, make sure that the slope limit is 45, step offset 0 0.25, and the skin width 0 0.02. Now for the center, 
um, 0 on the x, y 0 0.9, and for the radius 0 0.19 and height 1.76. Now, for the center on the y section, I encourage you to be at 9. Maybe if you maybe it depends on the size of the avatar. So play around with this settings. Now back on the third person controller script. Here, what it says playground grounded. Now uh, the ground offset I later at zero. Um, if you wanna have a visual, if you select, you're gonna see this little green orb. That's your ground visual. So the offset is gonna be at zero. But if I change this, notice that it's going up and down. He's going to be the one responsible checking if your player is grounded. Now, when I was preparing myself for this tutorial, by leaving at 0 and putting radius at 0 0.15, I has found no issue whatsoever. So, let us go back again and hit play. And we walk. And hearing the sound. Nice. Let's run. Let's jump of happiness. Yahoo! Now let us fall into the adventure here. Yay! So it is working. I can rotate. The animations are working for our avatar with no coding whatsoever. Now, if it's working on the desktop, it's also working on the mobile. So let's escape this little guy and here. And let us re-enable the UI canvas here. Now, something that I need to point out, we need to make a small change here in order to make the mobile version work. Where it says here on the UI canvas controller, we must add our player avatar. So we select here, it's go directly for the player amateur. Let us then drag our avatar and put it here. Then here on the game window, select simulator and hit play. And we walk. Obviously, I cannot make it run. Let us go look here. That's a little bit of sensible, but we can later on change this. And we can jump. So in this small video, we just learned and used the free tools that Unity provided us with, especially creating our avatars for our different characters, our own player for our environment. We just created this in a matter of a few minutes. If it's a little longer, sorry about that. But yeah, we just created this. For our next video, I'll be focusing on adding more animations and adding more buttons in the mobile environment and how the coding works. So thank you very much for hearing me out. Until the next one, have a lovely day.